previously on Describe Your Kill. Blonde? That is the single most dildo-shaped non-dildo <laughs> I've ever Sex seen. Toy. I love the idea Be of frightened these, of me. Yeah, these skulls being frightened. They're yeah. always smiling like a camel. <laughs> and that would be my like turn. A camel. <laughs> like a I'm pulling out like all the stuff. all over the place. We've got an orange loop in. You're yeah. these skulls. Yeah. It's been on Balloon holiday. Pin. And it's been Pride as well, hasn't it? It's perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, perfect. Pride months, let's go. Oh my god, Lupin, I don't I, I, I don't want to blaspheme, but you look fucked up like certain, <laughs> 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 certain god. <laughs> Appendages. No. Go ahead and make an impression. That is uh, against the will DC of the target. Yep. That's a natural one, Craig. No. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> It's Wednesday and it's time for Describe Your Kill! That time again. It sure is. Hello, everybody. How are we all feeling this fine evening? Bloody brilliant. Jason, how are you feeling after last week's miserable end to the session for you? Oh, wonderful. I I love pathfinder or dice based games sometimes they're they're just <laughs> perfect just love them <laughs> i listened back to it and i thought there's a little bit of me where i was thinking okay he did the good role play obviously it was the end of the night for us <laughs> should have given you a plus two to the roll or something like that but you yes. were rolled a seven yeah. you're like i'm re-rolling that okay do it yeah boom <laughs> yeah it's it's just one of those things to say. Is I, th- I think we've said it before on the record. It's just one of the frustrations with the dice based thing. You can do everything right, and there is a five percent chance that the dice just goes no nope, fuck all of that. You you failed. Do you, do you ever yeah. feel like that in day to day life, Jason? Was that like you, that happened? You're like, well, yeah, that about sums up today. For me. Absolutely. And for those days when you roll a natural one, reach out to BetterHelp.com. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. We're not Give having money. Them. Give me money. <laughs> I don't think that's how this works. <laughs> Shut up! Give me money. <laughs> Did make me laugh as well as I was editing down that, uh, despite teasing it previously. I think uh, maybe three or four episodes ago. What have we got to look forward to in chapter three? It might have actually been the chat with Matty. It's like we're gonna. There's gonna be doors, and once again, we were stymied for at least twenty minutes by <laughs> doors. How We're to not open used them, to them. What order to open No, you're not used to them, are you? I mean, Kamone struggled opening a lockbox that didn't have a lock on it. So, <laughs> like, a big old door. To be fair, I had to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> the second coming of Jill Valentine. But as he thought. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. So, all right, gentlemen. I, we are on quite a roll at the moment. We're obviously still at the Storval Stairs. I thought I'd just do a quick whip round of the games that we are all playing i'm going to start with matty any uh, top tips of what you've been playing at the moment i have downloaded crusader kings 3 again uh because i thought Ooh. well you know what i don't really need a life um and yeah. then oh, I, I thought i could do it in moderation but then all of a sudden it was three in the morning and i was the king of ireland and i just i needed to go to bed so yeah. you were missing norfolk and you wanted a way to fuck your cousin <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly um, but yeah i was thinking a lot of time into that um is it good i've not it. played it i've heard a lot about it is it a good game yeah i mean it's very it's uh, very dense and there's a lot going on um but uh, i think it's one of those things that there's once you get around the mechanics and start small there's uh there's a load of good fun to be had so yeah i'm yeah. really enjoying it this very rich uh, jason have you played it i have yeah i i saw i used to see people playing crusader kings 2 all the time i thought that looks like a load of fun i tried it about four different times and just bounced off it so hard and then i think three came out initially on game pass it was one of the first mm. big games mm-hmm. on game yeah, pass on i game thought pass, I'm, yeah. yeah i'm gonna give it a go you know and yeah this time it just got me i think three is much better and much more accessible and it, yeah, it, I really got into it and sunk a, a good couple of months into it. It's um, without, if you, without sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one session. Um, yeah, is if you were looking to get into it, I think three is definitely a, a good 
place to start and it is on game pass so there's no cost to it is other it, than, you know, uh, your life friendships family is it is it like because i've i tried to play civ civilization six mm. recently i thought i'd just run the tutorial mm. that's on game pass now but i that's not that's not for me at all like is yeah. it is, is it similar to that is there a lot of that stuff um, or is it quite a different game it's less it, it's less um sort of micromanagement than that it's more around sort of political intrigue and, and strategic side of things so it's sort of building alliances it, it's one of those things you are either going to be really really into mm. because of the sort of freedom it offers you and the ability to like build long-term plans that stretch like generations right and that's what or, happened with me i was really engaged in it because i'd managed to build up uh, the kingdom of ireland just through diplomacy and then I died, so my son took over, who was infinitely less popular than me. And then my, <laughs> co- my, co- my cousin, who had a claim to the throne, um, and I'd managed to placate him. He tried to uprise against me when I was on the throne. And then when when I died, he then went for my son, and uh, I lost the whole kingdom. And that's when I was like, I have to go to bed. But it was just <laughs> like, it, e- even when you lose, those kind of really interesting stories because of characters who you formed alliances with. And then when you're playing as another character in the dynasty, you get to see the other kind of perceptions. And it's just, yeah, it's really, really cool. It's in there with like sort of Dwarf Fortress and Rimworld in that like emergent storytelling style okay. thing. Very good. All right. We're well, talking of games that last two months. Come on, how's your Warcraft? Say, I assume you're playing Warcraft still. I'm not. Two um, I'm, you're a liar. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not willing to talk about that. But <laughs> I, <laughs> Should we ask Jesse? I have, I, I, I He's have, playing it right now. Yeah, <laughs> right now on my, on my first monitor, actually. You guys are off to the wayside. Um, yeah, no, I, I, but I, I did also start playing um, Lords of the Fallen, which is very good so far. Um, it's very, it's very Dark Soulsy, but uh, I like it. It's on uh, Game Pass as well, I believe. Yeah, it's on Game Pass, which I picked up last month. Nice. I know, kind of late to the party, but it's it's really cool. It's uh, yeah, it's it kind of uh, integrates this whole idea of uh, almost parallel realm sort of blending into the into the world so there's i don't know how they do it i think they render like two environments simultaneously and you can swap between them it's really cool okay nice excellent and is it is it as hard as a dark souls game it has some moments where it's as scummy as a dark souls game (laughs) but uh i haven't had any issues so far but i don't know if it is because of my way too many to count hours in the souls trilogy or if it is because the game is actually easier okay uh talking of hard games i'll just drop one in uh there's a game called returnal which was a ps5 exclusive which is on pc and i finally having beat red dead got around to playing returnal and again it's one of those games where hardly anyone is going to play it because it is fucking hard but uh, it, and also you, it will melt your PC if you want it to even look yeah. half decent. But oh god, those games are crack to me. If there is something that I can't beat, that is like right thirty hours. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> Anyone else played that? I'm guessing not. I'm not no. no. No, but I'm I'm looking at it right now. And where have I seen that before? Have Have we talked about that before? I did it? stream a tiny bit on Discord a couple of times. Oh yeah, okay. Then that's what I that's yeah. what I saw. Yeah. But I am properly in it now. It's very good, but very hard. Chris, talking of hard, how are you? Sorry. I was <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been right. playing? Um, I downloaded a game called Galactica, which is basically. Theme hospital in Galactica. Space. Okay, not heard Galactica. of Galactica. Ah, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Is that on it's, Game Pass? It is on Game Pass. Galactica. Yeah, and it, it is just theme hospital in space. And I love a theme hospital. I've loved it all the way through. Even the two point hospital. Love playing that yeah. a bit. Is it good? Yeah, yeah, I think so. There's a, there's a, <laughs> the second stage is a, you have to, cure people that are at um the stars of a concert so that might uh, that might pique your interest okay These aliens are at a concert and you just have to you know set up the rooms there's a little bit remember the level where you had to like blast the mice they, they sort of re oh yeah, yeah back in to, moles and, and mice in yeah the hospital, wasn't it? so that's there's a little bit more sort of games in that and slay the spire which i'm still <laughs> absolutely 
I'm so, so like four, 300 hours probably on it. 300 hours? Well, I've got it on my mobile phone as well. Oh, rookie numbers. Um, Noob. Slay the Spy 2, of course, recently announced. Oh, yes. Jason, you got the board game, didn't you? I have yeah. got the board game, yes. I, play I played my first I've yeah, played my first act with a friend the other day. It is fantastic in co-op. It really, really works. As in how many can you play co-op? Up to uh, four. four? You can actually play four players. Yeah, it, it works. It's basically sort of everyone has their own combat, but you can it, there are certain cards, because obviously the cards have changed, so it's like some defend cards can now add a defend on any row, so you can defend someone else. It's yeah, it, it it's different and the same, if that makes any sense whatsoever, but it really feels like Slay the Spire. Have you just posted your Slay the Spire playtime? I have, yep. Yeah. Oh my god. Do you want to tell us how many hours? It's, I mean, it's more <laughs> than 500, but it's less than 625. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, I mean, bear in mind, I've had, I, I've had the game pretty much since launch. Mm. So that was in... I think 2019. So it's over okay. five years, to be fair. So what have you been playing recently, Jason? I've been playing, annoyingly, if you'd asked this two weeks ago, I'd have been able to claim a really, you know, ahead of time, would have looked really cool, you know, picking the one that everyone's talking about at the right. moment. But um, unfortunately, it's released and everyone's seen how good it is, so I can't can't <laughs> get the hipster bit in now. Um, but Celico is the one I've been playing. It's a, a first-person shooter, mm. uh, and it is... It's running on the GZ Doom engine, so it is technically built running on Doom. Ah, uh, this is the early access one, right? Yeah. Is um, it any good? It is, it is fantastic. I've had it on my radar since... Uh, I'm going to go hipster here. I, I reckon about February last year when the demo came out, or when yep. I became aware of the demo and downloaded it. It's been sat on my wish list ever since then. And um, yeah, really, really good, fast-paced, hard-as-nail shooter. The AI is really good, really solid. It's full of really good and clever ideas. It's okay. just like there are little vacuum robots like Roombas uh, wandering <laughs> around, and you if you destroy a turret, you can actually fit the top of the turret to the Roomba, and it'll drive around shooting the enemies. Excellent. <laughs> like um, that. Also, good shout-out is because it was Steam Next Fest this week, a uh, sort of uh, load of demos of indie games. Mm. Um, Tactical Breach Wizards is um watching everyone try to get their head around that tactical um, breach wizards yes Amazing. it's by i don't know if anyone here has played gunpoint or heat signature um nope. by the development team that did that uh their games all have a theme which is launching people through windows and uh, <laughs> that is basically um that is also part of this the idea is is you are literally a wizard swat team and okay. you have like your your guns are literally it's like a rifle, but instead of a barrel, it's got a wand in the end and you use it. A to, wizard, not lizard. Wizard, yes, okay. not lizard. Lizards is probably the sequel. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's really, really funny, like really properly snarky humour. Um, okay. And it has a character called Steve the Traffic Warlock. If you need any more selling on it, <laughs> yes, I'm in. <laughs> Who All literally right. launches cars full of screaming skeletons at you? <laughs> All right, gentlemen, should we play some Pathfinder? Yeah. Oh, go on then. Yeah. I suppose that's our uh, main MO. So we rejoin our heroes at the Storval Stairs, where last week you began by taking on the powerful Sorceress Skull Swarm. And uh, I think we can all agree, probably the biggest challenge you've had in some time. It's not going to be life and death, but pretty powerful Never creature. Never a cool villain. Yeah. Cool yep. enemy. Yeah. I like the, yeah, the, I think, um, for me, they were. I was actually, yeah, panicked Matty a bit, yeah. I think, at one point. <laughs> My magic. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. everyone yeah. becoming stupefied too. I did do a bit of research on the forums just to see, and it is one of those unusual things where most enemy feats will have a duration of some kind, but for the stupefied, for this creature, didn't. So, of course, that was a problem, which you managed to luckily resolve. Uh, you did a little bit of healing course on the midway point and spent about an hour trying to open the box for the uh, <laughs> wand of vampiric exsanguination i think uh, malachi did take that he did yeah, yeah. 
And then, of course, you were presented with these three large doors to the north, one to the south, deciding where to go. And Wilhelm very cleverly uses the silent hag's ability to give himself life sense. And I was listening back again, and just one thing I had in my notes is, uh, you, you obviously, there was the joke around uh, Wilhelm still talking to the wall. But he still had life sense, so he would have known where you guys were, but just <laughs> yeah. not that he was talking to the wall, which I liked oh, very much. Oh, man, leave the bit. Leave I know. Bit. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, so, But we did find, of course, was to the north, through the three doors, that there were four vital essences of living creatures. You spent then another sort of seven hours discussing how to <laughs> enter those doors only to be met by four more mercenary guards that were clearly aware of your presence. Lupin did some excellent roleplay, some very threatening roleplay, only, of course, to be fucked over by a natural one right at the end of the session. So for a creature that was already probably indifferent, has certainly (laughs) gone down to hostile and they rush and charge. Wilhelm and Aaron are invisible. Lupin is in the middle. Malachi is on the right. There are four guards. Guys, roll for initiative. Let's yes. roll for initiative. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. Woo. 33. 33 for Aaron. Uh, 33 for Lupin. 32 for Wilhelm. 32 for Wilhelm. 25 for Malachi. Pathetic. Fine with it. Just to paint a slightly better picture of the room you've stepped into. So the three doors do indeed lead into the same room, but they're separated by these stone walls. I'll give you the flavor text. Passages lead east and west from this central corridor to large rooms containing several bunks. Clearly, these are resting quarters. Uh, The beds do appear to be recently slept in. The central area where Lupin is, is entirely empty of furnishings doors exit to the north and the south of the chamber Lupin's diplomacy at least for now has failed it's round one and somehow my creature has rolled the (laughs) highest initiative (laughs) now like the guards on the stairs these mercenaries are named so I'm going to tell you Lupin that Enavi is going to run round the back of you with her drawn longsword and attempt to strike you. This is going to be a natural 20. It's not, It's but it is a 32 <laughs> against off guard. Uh, that is actually going to hit, yeah. Uh, 17 points of slashing damage and then to follow up with secondary attack, a 21 to hit. Uh, that is a miss. Okay, thank you. Aaron, you are invisible on the left or west side of this map. You can see clearly one guard. You've got an invisible loop in front of you, but it is your turn. It's an invisible Wilhelm. Ah, yes, sorry, invisible Wilhelm. So Aaron is going to move into the room. They heard us open the door, so they know presumably that we're there, so we are going to be hidden to them. Aaron is going to move into this kind of bunk bed area in this uh, what looks like a garrison of some sort. Mm. And he is then going to fire off a shadow blast in a 50 foot line, which is going to catch both of those mercenaries and they will be off guard to this attack. So okay. here is the shadow blast. Uh, they can choose to roll either a reflex save or a will save. All right. So here comes the will saves. Oh, good rolls. 35 and a 37. Those are both passes. So here is the cold damage. Aaron shoots out. That is 40 points. So halved is 20 points of cold damage. And that's my turn. Thank you, Aaron. Hidden in the western side of these bunk bedrooms. I've just noticed on the map that each of the beds has got a ladder. So they they clearly are bunk bunk beds. beds. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Uh, that means we are over to Lupin, who is flanked by two of the guards. Yep, so uh, Lupin will uh, will realise that uh, he's surrounded, especially bearing in mind one of them's just stabbed him in the kidney. Um, <laughs> uh, so, ah, so we're doing that, are we? Okay, fine. And uh, pulls out his mirror and uh, he's duplicates himself, so he's behind the one that has just appeared behind him. Is that an interact action, uh, Jason? Uh, action I, to draw I would presume it would be. It doesn't specify that it is, but I, I'm 
You've got a draw. Because it. it's technically a, it's technically a free action. Uh, yeah, he's still got to draw it though. But, yeah, he's, that's what I, I, I'm. I'm not going to argue that that's a manipulate because you are you're grabbing, so it doesn't cost me any actions. So it doesn't have a sort of tag on it. That is, mm. um, yeah, I, I think it probably would. Okay. Would fall so let's get the attacks of opportunity out of the way, shall we? Super. Uh, first one misses with a 28. Second one hits with a 30. Five. Here comes your damage. They're 19 points of slashing damage as you reach for the mirror and the sword nicks you on the wrist. Okay, and uh, doesn't disrupt the action. So, uh, yeah, the duplicate of Lupin appears behind the one to the south. Okay. And uh, that, in fact, both versions of Lupin will appear to take a swipe at the one in front of them, uh, but only the, uh, the, the new one is actually going to connect. The other one will just go harmlessly through. Ah, so the, can the you give yourself flanking then? I can give myself flanking using the mirror, which is nice. really cool. Nice. Okay. Um, I should probably clarify as well, because I think uh, Lupin had his gun drawn. He did. So, yeah, uh, so second action will be to swap uh, the pistol for the sword Ooh. cane. Yep, nice. Remaster. Like it. Yep. Um, and then the uh, final action will be a strike with the sword cane. And that oh, there's is... two of them! How did he do it? Uh, that is a 35. 35 is a hit. Nice. Uh, 17 points of damage with uh, 1d6 bleed. Is that turn? Yeah, that is turn. Yeah, that's the third action. How bloody dare you! Right, Wilhelm, you're on the west side with Aaron. Uh, hidden as well, 10 feet away from uh, one of the mercenaries. Yes, um... Do you remember if Wilhelm drew his rapier before entering? I do, I and he didn't. Okay, so then Wilhelm is going to, um, as his first action, draw his rapier. And for his second action, he's going to attempt uh, a sneak action around that little corner. Okay. So that he is um, within stride distance of every one of the uh, guards. Sure. So for that, he's going to need to roll a secret stealth check. Yeah, that's going to be against the Perception DC. It's a secret check. Yeah, okay. This should be secret. Uh, Wilhelm, you successfully sneak into position. Okay. And for his third action, Wilhelm will enter his dueling dance stance. And he's going to hold off on attacking for now. That's his turn. Okay. It is the mercenary's turn, the one that Wilhelm and Aaron are, are nearest to over on the west side. Her name is Kalth. And Kalth, knowing where Aaron is, in terms of the square at least, goes, You bloody bastard, you come in here, this is the this is the home of the band of blades. <laughs> Swipes down with the long sword. Because as soon as, soon as she moves toward Aaron. Yep. Wilhelm would like to. Um, she steps. Would like to... She steps. Oh fuck you! He yeah, she steps. Doesn't even know he's there. She steps oh, and then, fuck and, you, then man. Does, and then does another one. That's a thirty-three to hit against Aaron. Yes, yes, that is a hit. But now roll for concealment. Oh god, is it DC eleven? It is DC eleven. Okay, here comes hidden. the D twenty. Oh no! Hey, it's a oh, ten. No. Oh, that's a 10. That's a 10. So despite thinking she's got the hit, she doesn't. And Miss Fish goes, where are you, you invisible bastard? Right, next up is <laughs> Saruf. <laughs> Sounds like something Matt Berry should say. <laughs> yeah. Different names, but they've all got the same voice. Next up is Saruf uh, to, the, uh, Saruf to the east and just 10 feet away from Malachi, going to step forward and he's going to unleash a power attack against Malachi, so let's go ahead and roll that. So power attack basically means that if I hit, I'll do an extra weapon die of damage. So let's see if we can hit Malachi first. Swings with a long sword. Whoosh. Natural five for a 26. <laughs> Malachi dodges out the way. Okay, and that is her turn. Malachi, you are up next toe-to-toe -to -toe with Saruf. Saruf is on fire. <laughs> You fucker, I was going to set oh, them on fire. No. <laughs> that was going to be my one line, oh, you absolute no. bastard. Sorry, Jason. You bastard. You bastard. <laughs> As Sarif is on fire, steps up to Malachi. Oh, I he don't rub it do in. He dodges, out, he dodges out of the way <laughs> yeah. and goes, Sarif, do you know what the knight with the highest voice is? I don't know. Sir, <laughs> concision. 
I'm cast spawn. <laughs> Fucking hell, right? <laughs> cast spawn mot. <laughs> <laughs> Why do it's they always quip. answer his questions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> right, bomb not. Roll your diplomacy <laughs> check against my target's will DC, which is up by 10. No, okay. Uh, 41. 41's critical success. Say, the target is distracted and takes a minus three status penalty to perception and will saves for one minute. Got it. Good you can mark. counteract it. And with that really insightful quip of a joke, mm. we've seen it before, we're going to see it again. He is going to cast Laughing Fit. <laughs> so Roof is going to need to give me a DC 30 will save to see how much she's going to laugh at this joke. That's a natural two for an 18. No. Oh. Why do they always laugh at his jokes? Critical failure. Oh, Saruf is in the This is what he did to Belinda. Like yeah. So Saruf goes prone because she critically failed and can't use actions or reactions for one round. And then becomes slowed one. So hard. And he, he kind of gives him another one. So you're laughing so hard at this. Um, do you know who the best looking one was? No. Sublime. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can I roll a will save, please, Craig? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> is that another? That was, just, that was just for flavor. No, no, no. That, oh, no flavor. Flavor. <laughs> flavor joke. Flavor joke. A natural one. Stupefied. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jason takes fucking 3d6 mental damage. No, that means Lupin also goes prone from laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll with it. I'll, I'll be fine with it. Uh, right. Thank you, Malachi. It is it's Jex's turn. Jex is the one that was uh, engaged with Lupin in the diplomacy checks. And ran forward, screaming for Belinda, and is going to swing with the long sword at Lupin, who's just five feet away, with a thirty-two to hit. Uh, yes, she hits. Excellent, and deals seventeen points of slashing damage. Uh, yep, that goes through. Um, as she does, mm -hmm. uh, that version of Lupin explodes in a shower of mirror shards, and deals. 7, uh, 9 points of damage sorry okay so each of them take 9 points of damage as adjacent as Lupin's uh, mirror image uh, disappears and explodes uh, that does put you to the south so you're now 15 feet away from because where the bloody hell did he go I told you to leave our death will not be happy why won't you just leave us alone and for second action we'll push forwards against you Lupin and swing again with her third action uh, with 22 to hit, which I'm assuming will miss. That does not hit. All right, top of round two. And it is Anavi's turn. She goes, listen to what she said. She told you to leave. Now, will you please fuck off? And then swings with her long sword at you, Lupin. You're getting nailed here. 36 to hit. Fucking hell, this lot of rolling better than the fucking giant and the dwarf. Yes. <laughs> New module. I was going to say, yeah, your, your rolls are suspiciously good after last week. <laughs> Although low damage, 15 points of slashing damage. Uh, yeah, have this! Uh, swings the sword, goes, right, have this as well! Uh, swings as again. She, as she oh. does, um, Lupin's amulet... Oh, no, no, ignore that, because she's not the target of exploit vulnerability. No, so she's not, right, I will ignore it. I will ignore it! Right, second action yeah. is a critical miss. Third action, though, right there. Natural 20! Uh, that is only a hit, because the... Oh. Uh, it would have been 31, so... 31 to hit, yeah. Ah, oh, okay, so not a critical hit, but still a hit. I'm so excited, too. And 20 points of slashing damage. Lupin is getting carved up <laughs> as he's forced out back onto the plateau by Enervy and Jex. Oh, I've got some persistent bleed to take. Let me just take that. Uh, recovery check. Failed. Okay. Nice. Aaron, you are up. You are toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guard that does know where you are, but was not able to hit you. Yeah, as he's dodging her random swipes with the sword, and they're hitting into the bunk bed behind him, uh, Aaron just slips out and moves into the centre of the chamber. He bumps into an invisible Wilhelm, and he's like, oh, sorry, sorry, and just moves past him ever so slightly. 
Yeah, so he's within range of all of the assassins, and they start to feel an assault on their consciousness as feelings of deep, agonizing fear. <gasps> uh, so you will need to roll a will save. This is a l- rank three fear spell targeting mm. all of them, because I can target up to five creatures, and they're all within range. So roll will saves for all of them, please. Okay, and I'm going to assume there is a fear effect, obviously, if that's okay. Yes, it is. It's right there in the attribute. <laughs> Are they immune to fear? And they're not immune to fear, but if they roll a success, they get a critical success instead. Ooh, and if they quite become brave. frightened, they reduce its value by one. So ah, I will, okay. uh, I'll go from left to right. So let's roll the first one. Let's say 31. That's on the DC. Excellent. Okay, next up is Jex. That's a 33. Oh, that's Ooh. pass. Uh, Enervy, next. That's 24, so that's a fail. Yes, that's a fail. And then finally, Saruf with a 32 rolling. Ooh. Absolute is that, is that with a minus three as well? Uh, yes, Bill's that safe. is with a minus three as well, yes. Wow. Jesus wow. fucking Christ. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, They've so got just, good will, these guys. Yeah, they, they managed to um, fight off those dark visions that Aaron is putting in their brains, except for the one who is by the door, and I guess she doesn't go frightened too. Does she go immediately to frightened one then? She would, yes. So okay. I would apply that. Thank you, Aaron. All right, that's my turn. All right, that brings us to Lupin, who is outside, back on the on the uh, midway point, by the double doors, but being pummeled by Jex and Envy. What do you do, Lupin? So Lupin is going to be, yeah, sort of furiously sort of fending off blows, uh, mm. left, right, and centre, so... And don't worry about me, guys. I'm fine. You three take on that one in the corner. His, uh, Wilhelm could use all the help he can get. Um, and Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. bastard. You bastard. Wilhelm uh, becomes him. And uh, we'll, we'll take a uh, swing with his sword cane. At, uh, no, actually, first things first, he will... Um, uh, he will exploit vulnerability on the uh, the one in front of him, the one that's bleeding, that he struck okay. last round. Yes, uh, so, he was also frightened. Uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, doesn't have any... Uh, that is a success, a 35. Uh, doesn't have any mortal weaknesses, so we'll just take the personal antithesis. Uh, for his second action, he will um, intensify vulnerability. Ooh. So uh, this is something not really used a, a ton of uh, up to now. So uh, he will use the mirror's ability to uh, intensify vulnerability. And uh, just bear with me one second, because the module doesn't support this, so I just need to read it. Does the uh, um, exploit vulnerability, does that have the manipulate trait? Uh, one second, I just need to check. I think as would bad as Kimon. think so. Uh, just check. Uh, yes, it does. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, so Lupin, I am going to take two attacks of opportunity against you as well. I would okay. expect nothing less, and Thank I expect you. you to hit both of them. Yep. I'm going to try. So with the frightened one first, with Envy, even though frightened, going to swing with the sword against Lupin with a natural 15 for a 35 to hit. <sighs> yeah, that hits. Okay. <laughs> Still medium damage. 18 points of slashing damage. Yeah, and this time, can't Jets take many more of those. <laughs> gonna take and swing with a natural eighteen for a thirty-nine to hit. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I am no, not. Man, you're good over there. <laughs> Low damage again. Fourteen points oh of slashing God. damage. Lupin, how many hit points you got left? Uh, thirty-one. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, uh, the exploit vulnerability <laughs> goes through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second action, uh, Lupin will intensify vulnerability so uh and it will be the mirrors implement that intensifies so uh reading it reinforcing your mirror lets it play tricks on your enemy senses and it bends light this way or that you become concealed to the target of your exploit vulnerability as your mirror warps its perceptions my overall location is still obvious so i can't use it to hide or sneak so it is just a a flat concealment okay that's cool the third and final action uh, is going to be... Do you not know fuck it? I'm just going to have to keep fighting here. Um, mm. and I'm not going to be able to run away. So, uh, yeah, is Lupin will take another strike with the sword cane. Okay, at the frightened one in front of you. Yes, absolutely. Envy. Hit me if you dare! Uh, that is a 37. 37 hit. is a hit. Lovely stuff. 
and uh, that will be uh, nice 19 points of damage Yes, and that's 19 plus, of course, the... Is it Mortal Weakness or the other uh, one? Yes, that is plus the Personal Antithesis, so personal it's an extra antithesis. eight points of damage. That has all gone through, Lupin. Thank you. As you sit there with your 31 hit points, it moves down the roster to Wilhelm, who is the other side of these two guards that are battering you next to Aaron at the moment. Wilhelm seeing Lupin get absolutely <laughs> demolished. I knew he'd be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> His face. Uh, as, <laughs> as, he, face. as he runs over into a flanking position with uh, Lupin on the opposite side of the bleeding uh, guard, uh, Lupin can hear Wilhelm go, uh, you okay in there, buddy? As, uh, <laughs> as he attempts a uh, strike. Doing just fine. At the, at the already wounded soldier. Um... So that is going to be a natural five for 33 to hit against off guard. That is a hit, Wilhelm. Thank fuck. Okay, that would have been (laughs) very embarrassing. Uh, That is 19 points of damage. All seems to go through. And uh, for a second action, he's just gonna, as he turns visible again. Ah... He's gonna attempt a second attack with Sid Disarray. That'd be your third action, I think, right? Uh, yes. That's a natural 17 for 40 against off guard. 40 against off guard is a critical hit. Yes! As Lupin okay. sees the hell <laughs> material. Don't kill him, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, 46 <laughs> points of damage. Oh, that really bloody hurt! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, uh, yeah, great turn, <laughs> Wilhelm. Is that... Yeah, that's turn. Okay, thank you. It is the mercenary that's still tucked in over on the west side. Does... No, Aaron has not snuck, I think, to be there. Is that right? There was no snucking? <laughs> no snucking. No snucking. I, I am hidden. Okay. Enough here. Don't worry, I'm coming. Don't worry. And uh, walks over behind Wilhelm, ignoring the... A hidden Aaron and gets the flank with enemy to strike with the sword <laughs> against a on a, blah, 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 to strike against an off guard Wilhelm. Here we go, rolling rocks at the moment. Can we do it? No, we can't. Twenty nine to hit. That does not hit. Okay, and it, that was two actions to get there because I couldn't go through Aaron Square. Saruf is on fire, baby. He's right next to Malachi and is going to attempt to attack. Malachi. Can't do anything. Oh, can't do anything. No, can't do anything. <laughs> okay. Like, why can't I do anything again? Just remind me. Uh, because you are on the floor laughing. LMFAO. That's what uh, you're doing. Okay. So can't you take any action. Any actions prone or reactions. For one round. And now, and now, because of that, I move to a failure, which will be slowed one slowed. and can't use reactions. Okay. That brings us to Malachi's turn. Malachi will step over the body to the uh, right-hand side of the body that is on the floor laughing at his joke. He will grab his kitar and out of the end of it will come a shadow blast (laughs) and will target to the east of him. There's two in a line um, and I will cast it at... Uh, To the east of you? To the west of me. Sorry. Ah, so you're to casting a shadow blast to the west of you in a straight line. Just That's cast what it into I'm a wall. Excellent. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. That's going to uh, hit I will... me. Where <laughs> on? <laughs> can't see you there. Sure, that's yeah, true. That's yeah. true. You that's can't true. see him. Yeah, Chris, that's in fact, true. <laughs> on, uh, quite honestly, didn't see you any. <laughs> I couldn't see you on the map because it's grey. It's grey on grey. for Chris. <laughs> yeah, for commitment. That is a real commitment to the role play there. Um... If I can find my spell, I will cast it at... Watch Malachi kill Aaron in this moment. (laughs) So that's a choice of reflex or will slave for those two in a row. Okay, well, they're going to cast a reflex for my guys. So the Saruf, who is on the floor, rolls first and rolls a 27. That's a failure. And then Kalf rolls a 32. Couldn't you do it as a 30-foot cone without hitting me? Oh, I could probably do that. I would say it's too late now. So, Aaron, do you want to roll your <laughs> reflex save, please? Please don't that fail. Keeping it snappy tonight, gentlemen. We've got a lot to get through. 
including Lupin Zim and a Death Aeron failed with a 27. <laughs> no. Lovely. 68, and I'm going to go for acid damage. Yeah, not cold. Love it. Yeah, thanks. Fuck it. Oh, it could have gone cold. Chris, not oh, just well. doubling down, but tripling down on the fuck you. Oh. <laughs> what did I do to upset Malachi? Oh, God. He's in a, he's in a belligerent uh, mood. Will, 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 you pledged yourself to defend my life. I order you what? to kill Malachi right what? fucking now. What do you mean, what did you do? You were right there. <laughs> Okay, so everyone takes 26 damage. Saruf and Kulf, 26 and 13. Uh, Malachi, that is your turn, I believe. That is my turn. Okay, it's Jex's turn. Jex is going to keep wailing on Lupin. It's going so well. Oh, that's a natural 17 with a 38 to hit, Lupin. Fuck me sideways. Yeah, go on. <laughs> oh, that's better as well. 21 points of um, slashing damage. Lupin's amulet glows blue and he resists 15 of that so he uh, only takes 6 uh, it's not the, it's not the one who's the target of your oh it's the other one okay it's the yep. other one. ignore sorry, that Lupin yep. yeah <laughs> yep. sorry yeah. it's yeah sort but of will swing one. again oh I told you not to come here right natural 4 for 20 there we go and then uh, will go for the nat 20 let's have a look see oh no misses okay that does bring us to the top of round 3 it is Enervy's turn. Enervy is... Can someone take a screenshot of this? Because it's chaos at the doors at the Storval Stairs. Enervy is currently <laughs> flanked by Wilhelm and Lupin, but can see Lupin is struggling. Am I right, Jason? Uh, getting the living shit kicked out of him, I think, is probably fair. So it's, even uh... though she is frightened and bleeding and has got Wilhelm behind her, can see Lupin on his last legs and is going to swing with the long sword. If this hits, I think Lupin probably goes down. Here we go. At least I can rely on healing from Malachi. Right? <gasps> That's a natural 16. Oh my god. For I, I want to see a fucking chain of these rolls. What the what you've rolled to hit 36 Lupin? 36 to hit Lupin. Uh, that is going to hit but roll concealment, please. Ooh. Oh. Come on. Here we go. Did we forget the consumer rule for the last attack? No, it only affects oh. the target my exploit oh, vulnerability. Okay. Oh, it's a four! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Get in. <clears throat> Unbelievable. So, Enervy strikes, but the concealment saves Lupin. I'll hit you this time, you bastard! Swings again. And misses with a 23. Crit fishing on the final roll. Oh! <gasps> No, that's not going to do it. 28 to hit. That is not going to do it. That's a miss. Oh, Lupin, have a hero point for the uh, intention for <laughs> For the tanking. Not for tanking. <laughs> Despite you fucking rolling a chain of about 14 natural 18s in a row. So, okay, here's my thought process. It had to come I think you only used intensify vulnerability because you're like, shit, I'm getting pummeled here. Yeah, I absolutely. need some concealment. And yeah. so it paid off. So I'm more than happy to give you the hero point. I'm going to kill you next round. Aaron, you yeah, are probably. up. <laughs> Ooh, Max okay, bleed. so Aaron sees just the outline of Lupin behind these mercenaries just getting pulverized, and he points his finger and shoots a bolt of magical energy that zaps into the mercenary directly in front of Lupin, who has who is bleeding uh, and taking and is taking the most hits. So this is a spell attack roll from Aaron. Yep. Okay. That is going to be... She'll be flat-footed to this as well, or off-guard, rather. Why was she off-guard to it? Because I'm in. I'm hidden to her. Okay. So that's 30 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, that is going to be 21 points of piercing damage. Are you now visible? No. Okay. Is it? Did you use a rank 4? I did, month? yes. Oh, oh shit. Ooh. Okay, Aaron, yeah, 21 points of damage, and the one in front of Lupin, the one that is laying out the pain, bleeding, is very, very nearly dead. Okay, and for Aaron's third and final action, he draws from his pocket a wand. Ooh. And that's all I'm going to say at this moment. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Lupin, you're outside the doors. You've got 10 hit points. <laughs> Plenty, more than enough. So, uh... Lupin is going to he's, he's starting to wobble a bit now he's, he's sort of looking a bit punch drunk um, but uh, sees the, the blade go sort of whizzing past his shoulder uh, through the 
uh, through the mirror's reflection and uh, takes a big old swing back with the sword cane. Okay. Uh, for a 37 to hit against uh, off guard. Jason, that is a critical hit. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Can you uh, put her down? She's been tormenting you this whole yeah. fight. No, oh, you can't. that's not amazing. That's 28 points of damage. Oh, but actually, the... with the more weakness or what, uh, the antithesis, yep. yes, you do take her down, Lupin. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so Lupin just sort of sees Woo-hoo. the uh, sees the sword go through and just sort of weaves out of the way and just pulls the, pulls the sword cane back and just runs right through and just makes a point of just bearing in mind Wilhelm is on the other side. The sword cane just sort of gently just taps into Wilhelm's chest and he just sort of smiles <laughs> over the shoulder as he withdraws it. I like um, it. All right, that's uh, one action for Lupin. That is one action. Um, oh, uh, what to do? Now, I can either I can draw and drink a potion or I can shift my exploit vulnerability to the other one, which would give me... Uh, which would pr- probably give me some protection. I can't do both. Mm. Uh, I'm going to draw and drink the potion. I'm going to take okay, the chance. As you draw the potion, uh, the attack opportunity it. comes swinging yeah, out from Jack. Gonna... I warned you! Oh, the natural three, though. 24 is not going to do it. That's not going to do it. No, that is a miss. Um, so, yeah, oh, Lupin draws a... Uh... Do I go for the big heal? No, I, I think I'll be all right. I think we've probably got this under control now. So he draws a moderate elixir of life, just uh, pops the top and uh, just pours it down his throat, and that is 30 <laughs> points of healing. Okay, Lupin heals for 30. That's his turn. Wilhelm, the body falls down dead with the flank that you had with Lupin, but you are still within five feet of two of these mercenaries. Yes, and um, first, first, first action, Wilhelm will attack the uh, guard that is inside of the room with him, so the one that's furthest away from Lupin Mm. uh, with a natural 6, with a a 34. 34 is a hit. 20 points of damage then. 20 points of damage seems to all go through. Uh, With his second action, Wilhelm will actually step one step closer toward Lupin. Okay. So sort of stepping on top of the freshly dead body. (laughs) And then for his third action, he's going to try to attack the other guard that just tried to attack Lupin. Okay. Another natural six with a 29 to hit. Also a hit. Oh. That is 22 points of damage. And she is off guard until the start of uh, Wilhelm's next turn. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Wilhelm. Okay, it is the mercenary's turn that is still inside the building, Kalf, and she is going to walk round Wilhelm and get the flank with uh, her friend and attempt to hit. As she walks toward Wilhelm, because she has to cross a space that he threatens Uh, to flank him, uh, Wilhelm gets an attack of opportunity against her. All right. Uh, 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 A reactive strike, I should say. Okay, go for it. (laughs) Okay. I I roll actually... I mean, it's to counter out the last two sessions. It's fine. (laughs) That's a 32 to hit. 32 is a hit. Okay, that is 19 points of damage then. Okay, so doesn't stop the movement. No. Gets into position and does roll a 39 to hit against Wilhelm. Yeah, that hits. Excellent. Okay, you're going to take 19 points of damage. And a second attack also against Wilhelm. Not going to hit with a 24. No, actually, that's a critical fail. Oh. Uh, As his AC is off guard, 34. So he gets a counter attack. Okay, nice. Two reactions you can get. Yeah. Annoying. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I find it really fun. Um, oh! It's a natural 20! Yes. Yes. There it is, boys. Oh, that looks tasty. That is 66 points of damage. Ouch. As well as 5 points of acid damage to her armor. Okay. Doesn't go through the hardness. 
That is a really big hit. And it is uh, Saruf's turn, who is prone next to Malachi. Slowed one, but will use one action to stand up. And a final action to swing with her sword against Malachi with a 31 to hit. That will miss. And moves it back to Malachi's turn. Malachi hearing Lupin's screams of... (laughs) (laughs) Don't merge in his mouth. (laughs) Lupin screaming like a little girl. (laughs) Screaming like a little girl. We can't say girly, actually. Can't say it anymore. No, screaming, screaming screaming in pain from all of the stabs that he's been getting will disengage from Sir Roof is on fire and will take an attack or a reactive strike because uh, no longer yeah. slowed of course so let me just roll that for you Malachi just in case you thought you got away with it a uh, natural one with a 20 I definitely got away with it you sure did and we'll start singing at Lupin even though he's got loads of pinholes i can see his face now just drop as <laughs> malachi sings <laughs> come ride with me through the veins of history i'll show you how god falls asleep <laughs> on the job we give up we give up. we give up <laughs> we give up we don't know what's happening no. he's too powerful we give up i surrender oh, to no. we'll all we live here together we'll all a seventh shuffle, shuffle level shuffle. a seventh <laughs> you may have a seventh rank soon oh it was a soon i should have known absolutely yeah think? Bit of Knights of Sidonia for 61 points of healing. Very nice. Thank you very much. And you are deafened one. I was just going to say, yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's Jex's turn next to Wilhelm and to Lupin. Is going to swing for Lupin, seeing him on his last legs. Can she hit with a 34 to hit? Uh, 34 is on the AC. That hits. I mean, not on his last legs anymore, is he? He's been healed. 14 points of damage. Uh, Yeah, that does go through. And as she swings the sword and sees it connect, realising that actually you've just been healed by this bard, this massive bard that stepped in (laughs) behind you. She goes, oh, Reggie, we can't do this. We can't. My life is worth more. Our death will not be pleased. uh, Saru, for you, yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, would you, uh, they all sound the same to me. We do, yes, we, we're related. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm tired. It's been a, a long day. It's uh, yes, I, told, I told you that before you all charged me. <laughs> yes, but you've got a natural one. It was terrible. Uh, <laughs> look, You did get a natural one, Lupin. I've got no appetite for this, I'll be honest. I only joined the Band of Blades because because Saruf did, and Saruf only joined because Grevery did. Now Grevery's fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> God knows where Lod is. <laughs> so, look, how about this? We swing no more blades. I'll put mine down. We'll put ours down, and we'll tell you what you want to know. No more bloodshed. <sighs> That's... And Lupin's still sort of, despite the heels, is uh, still a little bit like, uh, sort of, Still wavering slightly. Is, yes, I think I think that's a uh, that that that's a good idea. We've shed quite enough uh, quite enough blood for one day. That would be Aaron's turn. Well, Aaron has just primed his wand that he hasn't used. And he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, maybe next time. And he uh, stows his <laughs> wand and holds his turn. And that does bring it to Lupin's turn. Lupin uh, steps steps back and uh, just offers a uh, offers an arm in the direction of of outside and down the stairs. After you, right. and uh, I will I will ready an action to attack if attacked, but will otherwise let them pass. Wilhelm, Wilhelm is gonna step outside next to Lupin and do the same. That does bring it to the guards' turns. You hear him talking to him. Roof, it's come on. It's not worth it. Let's go find Grevery. I, I hear he's joined the Shuanti tribe. 
<laughs> he found a very powerful artifact out in the out in the grasslands. <laughs> uh, look, we know when we're beaten. We're humble mercenaries. We're paid for hire. We work for we work for money and for blood. But if you want my advice, if you want the money, go through the door to the north. That's where they keep it all. All the ammo and the and the supplies and our death's personal chambers in there as well. We'll be on our way. You fought well. Would you mind burying an Avi's body for me or putting him in gentle repose somewhere safe? Uh, trust me, that's There's no probably safe. better we don't. <laughs> right, no one under- understood. Right, I'll, we'll take her. And uh, she picks yeah. <laughs> picks up her her friend's body, leaves the, the weaponry behind, and the three of them scarper out of the building and down the Storval stairs. You are out of combat. The mercenaries smacked asses, thought they could get loop in. Nearly, nearly did, but weren't able to finish the fight. All right. So, yes, gentlemen, you are out of combat. You see the remaining three mercenaries carrying their dead friend down the Storval stairs. Over to you. Aaron comes through the door after becoming visible, and while he's walking up to Lupin, unwraps one of the berry tarts from his Ooh. knapsack <laughs> and says, uh, uh, Mr. Malice, I, uh, I think you need this. And um, you will get 27 points of healing if you choose to eat that tart. Lovely. Yet yeah, yeah, Lupin sort of uh, chews down on the tart, sort of stops a moment, picks a tooth out of it, and then... Uh, <laughs> I hope that was yours. <laughs> TBC, TBC. Uh, Lupin, how's he feeling after that fight? Uh, um, not that he'd admit it, but pride dented a little bit, bearing in mind the amount of shit he was giving Wilhelm. Um, but it was incredibly important to him that he got the kill, <laughs> <laughs> which he did. So uh, yeah, he's. Uh, he, he he's okay, he's okay. It's, I think he, he managed to sort of pull it back a bit, but he was not expecting to get hit as hard and as often as he did. Yeah, down to ten hit points. That's the lowest anyone's been for quite some time, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can have another tart, uh, Lupin, for thirty five. Thank you for hit much. points, and that is all of the tarts gone because Aaron just had one as well. Oh, as Lupin demolishes those tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, kind of uh, walks up to him from behind and sort of pats him on the back and says, "You good there? I almost thought I'd lose you there for a second. Yes, yes, I had it all under control. Is uh, they appreciate the appreciate the distraction so I could get the kill, but uh, yes, very, very, uh, yeah, very, very well done, <laughs> very well done, good job all round. <clears throat> sure thing, man, sure thing. <laughs> What's Malachi doing? Never, um, never ask that question, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Standing in the corner, pleasuring himself. <laughs> that, was, that was last week. That was a birthday treat, and it's not his birthday anymore. <laughs> Chris, are you playing with your rod of wonder? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> oh, God. Malachi's looking a bit guilty as you're eating and downing potions, and says, well... Uh, Sorry, Lupin, you didn't really like my song, but it's the only thing I could do for you in that moment, and it helped. And I know it's not the greatest to sing in, but I'm getting there. I have got another potion if you need it. Uh, no, that's uh, that's fine, Malachi, as I appreciate appreciate all the help, as uh, as always. You know, I, I get the kills, but it's a team effort. Um, <laughs> did he did he see... sort of gives a sideways look at Wilhelm as he says that. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, it take, takes a village, and uh, your, your help, as always, is... Is appreciated. Did you uh, did you see the uh, the acid that I spilt out at those two guys? It was mental. I yes, did, did. You, did you see that, Aaron? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, Aaron is like looking down at his slightly singed robes. <laughs> oh, oh, ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, don't that's, don't worry, Malachi. I know things like that happen. I'll I'll be cautious <laughs> never to go invisible <laughs> ever 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 again. <laughs> Um, and uh, Aaron, still uh, going through his knapsack, goes into the fourth compartment and he pulls out the golden bullet and he hands it to Lupin and Ooh. says, Mr. Malice, if you want to use this in your pistol, I think that it could bring you some luck. Yeah. And uh, just as a reminder, this gives you fortune on 
your next attack roll with the gun. Um, it is meant to be like a, uh, a sling bullet, but when Craig gave us this, yeah, he said we could adapt it for use in your gun. So cool. he gives you the bullet. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, is that an item you can give to me I in the inventory? Or? No, just, just you'll just have to rem- remember to give yourself fortune. There's okay. no specific item. Cool. That's fine. Make yourself a magic bullet. All right, gentlemen, are you done with your healing and stuff then? Or is it treating uh, wounds? So. I mean, it's only been uh, sort of... Five minutes. What, five, ten, <laughs> fifteen minutes? <laughs> well, well, you're outside the doors for hours, but let's say, yeah, fifteen minutes since yeah. Wilhelm was using the life sense power. Everyone steps back into the room that you've just cleared out, these bunk rooms, and there's the smell of habitation here. Bunk beds and chests and stuff but nothing of value this is where clearly the guards were sleeping yeah Aaron just moves back into the room and is just having a cursory look around the room maybe mm. casting detect magic as he kind of moves around just in case there are any harrow cards in, in here sure detects magic but uh, does not detect any magic coming from within the room but what you do notice is there is a large door again 20 foot tall these are high ceilings in here this is not like your average semi-detached house you're in these carved stone buildings which were housed originally for giants and another 20 foot door stands in front of you Aaron, leading to the north malachi catches up to Aaron. Well, the guy they suggested we go to the north. That's where the loot was, and they also said it was uh, the living chambers for their leader. You think we killed their leader? Well, why are they still here then? I don't know. Did, did any one of those guys look like a leader to you, or uh, it's kind of weird that the leader wouldn't be here, right? They they were like mercenaries, though, so. I, they don't really know who their leader is. I, <clears throat> well, it's presumably some, someone has to pay them. But uh, is uh, it's it's probably wise to assume that <clears throat> whoever is in charge is likely still here. Or well, we should certainly work to that assumption. Is at least that way we can be pleasantly surprised as opposed to the opposite. Yeah, they kept saying his his name is not Abadar. What's his the name they kept saying? Aradeth. Aradeth. Aradeth will be displeased, they, they kept saying. Seems we need to find this Aradeth then. Well, his, his chambers are apparently that way, so it's as good a place as any to start. So Aaron moves up to the door as uh, the north and listens at it. Uh, roll a secret perception check, Aaron, please, as you step up to this large 20-foot door and listen. Okay. You do not hear anything, Aaron, at all. And Aaron opens the door. Aaron, again, this 20-foot tall door, which you would expect to be incredibly heavy, does open very easily. Maybe some ingenious dwarven mechanism to help open it. You open the door, and it leads to a central chamber. You look in, rising 50 feet to a cathedral-like ceiling... There's three doorways providing exits from the room, one to the south where you are and the others to the east and to the west. The once grand carvings decorating the walls of this room are blackened with thick layers of soot and the worked stone tiles of the floor are chipped and covered with various carts, boxes and barrels and all sorts of other loose trade goods lie haphazardly on the floor this is quite the stockpile of stuff in front of you so moving into this uh, warehouse room uh, Aaron lifts the lid off one of the boxes is it anything of note or is it just kind of mundane supplies and skulls yeah no you you open it and there's definitely uh, in the first one you open Aaron there's these kind of fine cloths you see uh, they call it bolts I believe, where it's been wrapped yeah. ready for transport having a quick rummage this is clearly worth quite a bit of gold several hundred gold in fact is it easy to put into bags of holding 
the the cloth that you've opened certainly would be yeah I have this yeah this looks pretty uh this looks pretty fine um make we should take this and Aaron hands it to Lupin to put into the bag of holding yep so you've opened one of these boxes but there is quite a lot of stuff here if you think that if you wanted to properly search through it all it's going to take you a good hour or so to do so should we uh, maybe come back to this room after we've explored the Storval stairs a little bit more thoroughly? Because there could still be uh, mercenaries or enemies here. Yes, sounds like a good plan. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. This is unlikely to unlikely to go anywhere just yet. Aaron, you see that the door to the west is slightly more ornate and decorated than the door to the east. Well, this way looks. Uh, it looks as good as any. Should we go this way? Lupin sort of still just prodding around at things and looks like, hmm. yes, yes, I, I suppose so. Is uh, to make a choice. This one seems to be as good as any. Okay, Aaron steps up and pushes on the door. And when you push on the door, but it appears to be locked. Oh, oh no. If only <laughs> we had someone good with thievery. I had only three no. hours to spare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only thing I can do is identify the lock. <laughs> yeah. There you go, it's definitely you do, locked, you do right? This, we've got several hours to pick through all the other stuff, so <laughs> while you're working oh, out how to open you it. guys. <laughs> Wilhelm, the door is locked. Would you like to attempt to pick the lock? Yes, please. All right, go ahead and roll a secret thievery check. Okay. Wilhelm, you critically fail, and your lock picks break in the lock. Oh, no. I have a plus 26, guys. I'm kind of... I'm I'm really mad right now. Uh, can I use a hero point for that? You can use a hero point for it, Will. I will you use a hero point. A I'm going to lose my fucking one. mind. <laughs> I'll put that in chat for everyone I, to laugh at you. Can I give <laughs> you guidance on this? You can. Yeah. I'll give you guidance for a plus one. Oh, very good. Baldur's Gate 3, if you've got a shadow heart in your party, <laughs> constantly spamming <laughs> that guidance. Uh, Malachi gives Wilhelm guidance. Wilhelm, re-roll with your hero point, please. Yes. Wilhelm, you hear one of the tumblers in the lock go, click, but the door is still locked. Uh, Wilhelm sort of looks over to the others and says, okay, so far so good. I'm going I'm to need a moment more. And uh, he attempts another check, as I assume this is a multi-success lock thing. You would mechanism. assume correctly. Give me that. Second thievery check. Yes. Bill Home with a secret, I'll tell you, natural 19. Yes. Manages yes. to critically succeed. And the door becomes unlocked, but does not immediately swing open in front of you. After he and I assume everyone who's listening in hears this sort of click of a door unlocking, he um, silently pulls out his rapier and sort of uh, suggests the others to be wary and um, holds his ear to the door. Roll a perception check. That's a natural 18 for 39. Wilhelm, you don't hear anything coming from behind the large door in front of you. And he quietly opens up the door and lets it kind of creak open. Okay, Wilhelm, you try to quietly open the door but again the mechanism the craftsmanship is so good that you don't need to so you do open the door and it leads to a circular chamber containing a comfortable looking bedroll and several open chests filled with clothes and books the room appears to be lived in recently i think we might have found their leader's room at least but Don't look like much, does it? No, not really. Aaron casts Detect Magic. Aaron, you detect magic, and there is indeed a source of magic coming from one of the chests in the room to the south. There's something magical in here, guys. Um, I would like to check for traps. That's fine. Yeah, yeah just as Aaron's check, reaching please. for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, no! Hold on. Wilhelm does not appear to be trapped. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Lupin and Malachi step into this circular chamber as well. The ceiling again, 30 feet high here. And Aaron uses telekinetic hand just to open the chest at a distance. 
The chest opens, Aaron, and inside you see what appears to be a resplendent cloak folded neatly on top. Ooh, I pull it out to have a look. You pull it out, and it is indeed the source of the magic, if you would all like to try and identify it. Yes, please. Arcana, nature, religion, or occultism will do. So all of you except Lupin do manage to identify this item. This is a clandestine cloak greater it's a level Mm. 10 item worth 900 gold when you pull up the hood of this nondescript gray cloak as an interact action you become drab and uninteresting getting a plus two (laughs) item bonus to stealth checks and deception checks to impersonate a forgettable background character such as a servant not milton but also (laughs) taking a minus one (laughs) item penalty to diplomacy intimidation checks and once per day you get the non-detection spell. So it's yeah. resplendent, but also nondescript and grey. <laughs> yes. It's resplendent because it was at the top and magical. <laughs> yeah. It was glowing. <laughs> when I was casting to take magic, I thought, oh, it's resplendent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you question the clandestine cloak. That is its power. Well, who would like the resplendent cloak? As resplendent as it is, uh, it's, I'm afraid grey is not really my colour. <laughs> Show that to your hair. <laughs> oh, zing. Oh, zing. <laughs> oh, that was good. Gotcha yeah. there, man. That's the third best shot I've taken today. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, those, are those, sorry, are those passive bonuses? or It's a passive bonus, but only for checks to impersonate. And impersonate is an action. But a general... Um, it's not just an ongoing... Minus one to diplomacy checks. Yes. Always? When or do you, you have to... When you use it, yeah. Oh, okay. So just, just when you're using that feed. Yeah. And then once per day, for two actions, you can pull the cloak's hood up and gain the benefits of a fifth level non-detection spell. Or veil of privacy, as I think it is takes 10 minutes to cast lasts eight hours and it attempts to counteract all detection revelation and scrying effects used against the target throughout the duration Mm. so it's kind of like a i don't know if i've been reading june lately a no ship or uh Mm. yeah it's very much not looping i think um feels like it would be quite on brand for wilhelm yeah, Vilhelm would have to decide between that and his cloak of heaven kind. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. And Malachi's it's, got uh, six, six cloaks on already, hasn't he? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, he looks down at his charlatan's cape and he's quite happy with the movement ability that it gives him. Well, you can um, only wear one, one cloak at a time, right? Yeah. yeah. Or really <laughs> two cloaks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, worth, it's worth a shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> will he do cloaks? <laughs> uh, Aaron will um, don the cloak then. Does that make him resplendent? No, it makes him drab. Looking drab, man. He puts the grey cloak you. over his grey robes <laughs> with his grey skin so and his grey hair. <laughs> ashen, you could say. Just as I thought you couldn't become more ashen, here you are. <laughs> Everybody else, whilst Aaron is trying on his new cloak, roll perception checks for me please as you're having a look round this room 34 30 for lupin wilhelm and lupin you're investigating this room and malachi in fact you have a look round, and not only is aaron finding this magical item what you also find are lots of books and journals and diaries relating to an aradeth do we know anything about our death? Obviously, we've heard him mentioned. So I'm going to assume that you maybe pick up a couple of the books, start flicking through them, trying to see. Mm. Again, if you want, you want to try and understand what's going on here, it's going to take you probably about an hour to do so. If you're willing to, willing to take that time, then I can give you a bit more, but that is up to you guys. <clears throat> Mechanical question here. Would there potentially be enough in there in in these books that Lupin could use it as a method of exploiting vulnerability would he be able to learn enough about Aradeth that he could effectively have an exploit vulnerability on him 
I think you wouldn't know the answer to that until you unless tried we actually to, looked. Okay, but uh, okay. So mechanical question it. from a GM point of view: Would you be willing to entertain it if there was enough? Of course, Jason. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the, the the book reads that if you want to try and interpret them a bit more, it's going to take an hour. It's going to be an occultism check or a society check to try and interpret them as best as you can. Okay. Um, <clears throat> gentlemen, I, I, whilst uh, is perhaps we couldn't justify the time to go looting for treasure, I think there is potentially some considerable benefit to uh, knowing our adversary a little better. Perhaps we split up. I can do some research in here and uh, you can search the room outside yeah that sounds good okay and Should be fine yeah uh yeah so so lupin sort of can't wait to, to just dive into some books and tomes so quickly uh goes and grabs a few and uh, puts them on a sort of small small desk or bedside table and right. starts scanning through them nice okay you want an occultism check I do, yeah. So I want an occultism check, and other other three of you, whilst he's doing this, because it's going to take the hour to do the check. Are you going to go and sort of rummage around in the room outside? Is that your plan? Yeah, basically. Aaron's knapsack is also a bag of holding, so he can start loading stuff into his own backpack. Okay, so let's deal with the Lupin check first. Uh, occultism or society, Jason? Uh, occultism. I'm a master in occultism, so... Okay, go ahead and roll that occultism check, please. give you guidance. I'll pop my head back in and give you a little bit of guidance <laughs> on that. Ah, what Hello. was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Rod, Rod of Wonder. Uh, put it away. <laughs> uh, that's a plus one to that, isn't it? That is a plus one, yeah. Yeah, okay. Ugh, it's a natural seven for 27. Um, There's a fail loop in. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my, uh, my second hero point for that, because I have Okay. Here we go. Natural one incoming. Here we go. Oh, that's a natural three. Oh. Why does this game punish me for trying to engage with? This is why I don't fucking engage with it, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, how about you roll better instead of complaining? Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, Look, yeah, don't fucking point. take my complaining away from me. That's literally the only thing I've got now. <laughs> That's all I've got, man, please. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. That's... So, Lupin, you spend an hour as the uh, as your teammates rummage through. I'm not going to punish you completely, but you don't get the full meaning of it. But the one or two things I can tell you is that, despite your failed check, you've spent an hour reading these, is that the... Storval stairs are indeed confirmed to be controlled at the moment by the band of blades, but they are run by somebody called Aradeth, not by Drusten, the name that you've heard before. Mm. Aradeth, you can kind of infer from the texts, is female. And you see a lot of wording and a lot of almost uh what's the word i'm looking for conspiracy like text around the death of araden about the second coming of araden and oh. about the fact that basically her life has not been quite as good as she would have hoped and she was originally from cheliax and has ended up here but Again, I can't give you everything because you've failed. Yeah. Check. But there's definitely some stuff here around Araden and around prophecy and also a slight feeling of resentment about the Band of Blades, but that they are indeed here holding, at least for now, the Storval Stairs. Hmm. Okay, so Lupin will sort of wander back into the main room, slightly frustrated, but we'll, uh, we'll share that with the party. You step in and the rest of the party have been ransacking the room, <laughs> tossing shit everywhere. <laughs> and you do manage to find quite the treasure trove of stuff you find buried in the boxes in carefully wrapped packages. Two greater alchemists' fires worth 500 gold each. You find six moderate alchemists' fire. Wow. You find an ornate stool made of ebony and jasper worth 220 gold boxes of gilt parchment 810 gold 
and you find gold worth 458 and another 340 gold in coins. Clearly, the tolls that were being taken from those poor travellers being stored here in the storehouse. There is one item, though, that you can't identify. It appears to be a bullet of some kind. Mm. And Aaron, it is indeed emanating magic. If you wish to identify it, those checks are in chat. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so, Aaron, you do successfully identify what this is. And this is something called a meteor shot greater. Ooh. This is a single bullet worth 400 gold. Oh, fucking hell. This craggy... Who's going to cream his pants? <laughs> yeah. Or sell it. This... I, just, I just saw his mouth smooth. Like, it just, <laughs> like, it went, it just like a twitch on his face. It, he definitely... He definitely had a jizz in his pants over that. This craggy stone ammunition is warm to the touch. When you fire an activated meteor shot, it explodes into a small swarm of meteors as it reaches its target, scorching nearby creatures and littering the ground with rubble. In addition to the weapon's normal damage, the meteor shot deals fire damage and the ground in the area becomes difficult terrain. It deals 66 fire damage in a 10 for emanation Ooh, nice. with a DC 29 basic reflex save. And so this is Jason's version of fireball. If you quickly yeah, fail, yeah. your weapon will misfire. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. cool. That's that is cool. Yeah, that is that's pretty cool. So um I assume no one's gonna fight me for that one. Rollies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, really is. I it? want it just because you make fun of me, Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll... I think I should be taking that. <clears throat> uh, what do we want to do with the alchemist's fire? Do we want to chuck them in the bag of holding? I would like to keep at least one on my person in case I ever get, you know, <laughs> outraged, hungry. <laughs> so that's never happened before. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what do you want do you want the one of the greaters or the moderates I will if you ask like that <laughs> that's any question yeah I will take the greaters then okay so I'll I'll put the moderates in the uh, bag so you each get 114 gold from the nice nice as you are handing out this loot mm. the stone door to the east which, as you now notice, it was slightly ajar, now opens. Coming from it is a well-dressed gentleman that looks like this. He looks friendly. He is indeed a well-dressed gentleman. No arms, though. Isn't this no. is the first time I don't <laughs> just, actually just described some, someone's chin <laughs> as chiseled. The, is it his chin? He's or? been mewing. He's no, been it is mewing. his chin. He's got a goatee. It's not a goatee. It's his chin, but he's only got stubble. He's only got light stubble over it. He's, that is that is a very sharp chin. I'm gonna. He's, yeah, he's so got, you might have to register that as a weapon. He's got a, head, a headbutt attack that deals piercing damage. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Opens this door as you're all handing out the loot. Steps in in these long robes dark skin and politely coughs <clears throat> uh, may I ask what you are doing here does this look as bad as it looks I believe you are not part of the band of blades Th that's, that's correct yes that, that would be an accurate summation Wilhelm would walk back a step and gently close the door behind him from where the bodies are visible <laughs> <laughs> and all the blood <laughs> just like kicking an arm <laughs> so the door can close <laughs> it's a wolf holding on to one <laughs> so Wilhelm steps and closes the door I hope that the mercenaries have not been too bothersome for you <clears throat> no, no, absolutely fine. We've had no problems with the mercenaries whatsoever. Dealt with those, <laughs> we, no problem. <laughs> we made peace with them. We made peace with them. They're all right. Stands really. quite tall. And ask again. And then I ask once more, what are you doing here? It appears that you are raiding the treasures of the Band of Blades. Our death would not be pleased by this. Yes, we, we, we're hearing that quite a lot. Um, 
again, it is an accurate, accurate summation. We are we are here to see Aradeth, and uh, we have met his external guards, and uh, we are we are still here. So we are resupplying before we uh, we move further into into the fort. As, as you say, Aradeth is unlikely to be pleased by this, so we would like to be prepared. I would like to point out that I am Aradeth's financier and treasurer. I look after her finances. And he's smiling, like he is smiling. He doesn't feel threatening at all. He's he's kind of almost like a cheeky smile on his face, kind of caught you in the act. And I imagine you all look quite sort of red-faced as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vern would like to sense motive on exactly that behavior, please. Okay, roll a secret perception check, please, Wilhelm. Uh, Wilhelm, you believe, uh, you think that he is telling you the absolute truth. So it doesn't seem like he's playing us in some way with his smile and Absolutely demeanor. not, no. You don't get any of that from him at okay. all. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I've got a question. Are you a member of the Band of Blades? I am not a member of the Band of Blades, no. I am... Uh, a vested interest in our death's business operations. I invested money in her. Mercenary work is well-paid work, especially if you control the Storval stairs. So no, I am not a band of blade, but I work for our death. And if you'll forgive my directness, surely anything that is bad for our death, such as a conflict with a group of travelers is therefore not necessarily in your interests either yes if you are stealing the monies from the band of blades then this is bad for business but also the band of blades have many mercenaries that could easily take care of this problem i uh, do not seek violence i only seek profit you will understand is, is our <clears throat> our motivation here is not directly Profit, as such, we come seeking items and artifacts as opposed to gold and silver. However, it, it would appear that Aradeth has become a, if not a direct thorn in our side, then a recurring theme in our quest. And uh, I dare say that uh, our goals are perhaps mutually exclusive to hers. May I ask what quest brought you to the Storval Stairs? I think a little healthy mystery probably benefits us both at this stage of our friendship. <laughs> have you met with Aradeth yet? Uh, we have not. Perhaps you'd do us the honour of introducing us. Perhaps I would. Yes, that could certainly be arranged. So Lupin sort of turns to, to glance at the others to sort of raise an eyebrow. To, so are we go? you know, is that, this the way we want to do it? Aaron wants to very subtly cast Detect Magic. See if there's any magic emanating from this guy. I will obviously step within range. Just so we're clear, Detect Magic is going to be... I don't think it has the... It's not attack. Uh, what's the word now? Attack trait. <laughs> attack tra <laughs> it's... Um, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. subtle. He'll, it's know, matter, you'll, he'll know you'll cast it, I think. There are no, yeah. there are no, I thought there are no components anymore. Oh, true. Oh. There are no components, but there are, I presume it has a verbal... Uh, oh, it does have the manipulate trait. Oh. Yeah. So it's up to you. I'm not saying you can't. I'm I don't just... I don't care about him. I'm, not, I'm just trying to be subtle. I'm not trying to be completely Yeah, but what my, my question is, there is now a subtle trait. So you trying to subtly cast a spell. You see what I mean? I believe there is there is a specific feat for casting without it being observed. Yeah, I think Aaron is going to do it. He's going to step forward and just do it. And, he, and as he does, he says, Forgive me, friend, but we've met nothing but danger and violence since coming to this place. I'm just checking whether you're armed or not. Obviously, you know, he's kind of detecting for magic and not weapons, but that's what his story is. You step forward and do this. Yes. It is no bother for me for you to test me if you feel it is necessary and when you cast Detect Magic, you do not detect any magic coming from him whatsoever. And uh, he, he kind of gives a look to the rest of the group to indicate, like, no, there's no kind of sign of a, a card or anything magical on his person. And he turns back to the guy and says, 
So you say you can introduce us to Aradeth, but what would you want from us in return? I would not want anything from you in return. All I will do is tell you where Aradeth is. I have my work to continue. I am a dabbler in the alchemical arts. I have my work, but if you continue south and then continue following the passages, it will lead you to Aradem's offices deep within the Stovall stairs. But I would ask you to be careful. Our death can be very vengeful. I thank you for the warning. It is uh, appreciated. I hope we will uh, we will meet again soon in better circumstances. Malachi, you do see that through the door that he has opened, there is a table within the room that he came from that is full of alchemical items, and you can't quite far away from it, but you can see that. There's something going on there. There's a desk of, of some sorts. Mm. Can I just ask a question to the group? Because I'm a bit confused about Aradeth. So I I don't remember hearing this name until we came to the Storval Stairs. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So is do we know whether Aradeth is a member of the Band of Blades? Is that what we're I assuming? Would- I would assume that she's the head of the um, of the of this division. What are they called? Of oh, um, of these mercenaries. Who, so she kind of brought them all in here. I would guess that she's the one in contact with the band of blades. I would say that just to jump in from Lupin's look through the journals, even though he failed, the Aradeth the reminder. is the leader of the Band of Blades and Lupin would have shared that with you. Wait, what? <clears throat> okay, so I think... So that- it was Dresden though, wasn't it? Dresden was something that was banded about for a bit. And then... Willem, yeah, Willem would kind of um, look at the uh, at, at the guy and say, what happened to Dresden? Dresden? What is it you want to know? We were told that Dresden was in charge here. But now we keep hearing about this Aradeth if person. You want me to share? Drusten left the Stovall stairs some weeks ago. Uh, he is one of Aradeth's lieutenants. Okay, but he's mm-hmm. he's still kicking around. Aradeth didn't just kill the leader or anything like that. I'm I'm confused here. <laughs> Are you guys confused? No. So Aradeth is like the CEO. And Dresden is like, uh, like the a manager, manager. <laughs> a regional yeah, manager. Regional yeah. manager. <laughs> what was Blan yeah. Blan F the butcher then like? Yeah, oh, yeah. no, he was yeah. lower management supervisor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, head of HR. <laughs> <laughs> it's so the thought occurs is that there is no better way of remaining hidden or remaining incognito than having someone else's name attached to your deeds, regardless of whether that individual exists or not. It is true. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, Aaron says, what we do know of the Band of Blades is that you forced the Shuanti from their home. You accuse me as though I am one of the Band of Blades. I'm, I'm not accusing you, friend. I'm just telling you the facts. The Band of Blades forced the Shuanti tribe from their home. Is that true? Or is that false? It is true. And how are you comfortable with that? Was it good for business? My moral compass extends to profits. And Aradeth has provided me with many profits by taking the Storval stairs. Well, if that is true, then do not pretend that you have a moral compass. And Aaron turns and leaves the room. Lupin, Lupin with that, just sort of nods and um, not nods to the guy and just follows Aaron out of the room. Then would kind of look the guy up and down for a second. Uh, is he human like full-on human clearly yeah okay he kind of looks him up and down for a second and then just follows behind perhaps we will meet again go visit our death and uh, your business between you will perhaps in turn dictate what my business is here at the Stovall stairs if you need to find me my name is undede <laughs> can we pronounce that for me quickly <laughs> undede Undead, dead. <laughs> it's a zombie, get him! <laughs> um, so you all leave the storeroom. Malachi fixes his eyes with the guy. 
and doesn't let go of his uh, of eye contact with him as much as possible as he's going out the, out the door. Gives him the side eye as much as he can. Okay. So you all leave the chamber of the store cupboard and Undede closes the door behind him, steps back into his room. What are you going to do? Well, he seemed quite amicable. Bear with me one second. Um, Bill Helm, give me a hand with this, will you? Um, and Lupin is moving towards the, uh, the, the cart near the, near the dead horses. Okay. What I would like to do is I would like to basically use the cart um, to barricade the doors that we've just come out of to stop us being followed. Ah, uh, so to drag in the uh, the cart to try and barricade the door that led to that chamber. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, as, as we're a little bit further away and sort of towards the cart, he'll mutter under his breath, I don't know who that man was but I am 100% sure he is not what he told us. It wouldn't surprise me if that is somehow Aradeth himself using an assumed name, or Aradeth herself, herself or themselves, or, or whatever. I'd, yes, he seemed very sketchy to me as well. For a, I, I, for a man who professes his love for gold to the point he's willing to exile entire communities, he seemed very happy to let us walk out of the room with his own supply. That is true. Although I, I didn't really catch anything that looked insincere, you know. I, 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 I knew a lot of people in my, in my time that uh, did business and betrayed people and just bad people. And he didn't seem like he was out to get us, you know. It's really weird. Um, and Lupin sort of half smiles to himself uh, yes I've I've done my share of business myself and in my experience those are the ones that get you so some suspicion around Undede where the door pushed open into the room but I'm more than happy to put the cart there and that would block a 5 foot space off the 20 foot door <laughs> <laughs> fuck but if you want to barricade the door, you know, you could move the bunk beds. If that's what you're wanting to do, I'm, I'm more than willing to, to say that you spend a bit of time doing that. I, I would like to. I, I think I, and this is Jason speaking, not Lupin, but I feel like Lupin is savvy enough that he would pick this up. I got a very bad vibe off that, do that dude. Mm -hmm. and, and like I say, what, what he was saying and what he did did not line up at all for me. No. All right, so let's say you spend 20 minutes moving the wagon, bits of furniture, and even though the door does open inwards, you can kind of put a pretty good 10-foot-high barricade across that door. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, let's spend fine, that. Yeah. So that all that remains is the door to the south on this plateau. Okay, so Aaron moves up to the door and starts listening at it. Aaron, you do not hear anything. Okay, Aaron will. Open the door. Aaron, you open the door and inside you see another large chamber. Long. The ceiling of this hall reaches up 30 feet. A ring of stone in front of you surrounds a large campfire in the center of the room, while a cauldron set over the fire bubbles and emits a savory aroma. Three jury-rigged tables with equally shabby chairs stand elsewhere in the room, while to the east, several crates, bags, and barrels of foodstuffs are stacked against the walls. There are no living creatures that you can see inside as you step in. But there is a door to the west that is very clear, and all this barricade of stuff to the east in this rectangular room. Okay. I don't think there's anything in here. Just potatoes and onions. Wilhelm steps in. Malachi Lupin, are you stepping in? Yes. Yeah. Lupin will just uh, sort of one last glance over his shoulder and will uh, will step in. Looks at his handiwork of the barricade he's built. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Halfway well, we up the door. I have to say, they seem to have uh, settled in quite well here, haven't they? Everybody roll 
now you're in this hall, this mess hall. It's clearly the food area of the Storval Stairs, of the Band of Blades camp. Everybody roll me perception checks, please. Natural two. <laughs> Natural one. How <laughs> do you want better, man? 37. <laughs> Lupin and Wilhelm walk into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi just likes a fire. Aaron. You're having a look round. You were the first into this room, keen to press on. As you're having a little look round, you notice to the east that behind the barrels, behind the crates, there appears to be a wall that is not quite as flush as you would expect it to be and realise that there is a secret corridor behind the barriers activated by a small pressure plate on the wall. Oh, Aaron notices this and just instinctively presses the pressure plate. Aaron, you press the pressure plate. The door rumbles and begins to slide open and you see a 20-foot chamber beyond as the curtain comes down. <laughs> Whoa. It reveals another door. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Describe Your Kill, The Death of Destiny. Find out more at describeyourkill.com. Thank you to Paizo, Michael Gelfi, Creator Cord, Sirenscape, Kevin McLeod, Foundry, and Sigil Services. Get all the links on our website. This podcast uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. Used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. This podcast is not published, endorsed or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com.